Now, before we do begin this video, I want to preface it by saying I do not recommend that anybody tries any compound, psychedelic or psychoactive or psychotropic otherwise, without the proper research and care and without tackling it from a responsible and mature standpoint. I'm basically sharing my experience with you guys so you can learn from my mistakes and not make the same ones yourself and so you can, you know, learn to be healthy and safe with your use. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into today's video. Hello to all of you lovely folks watching this show on, well, if you watch it when it releases, on a Saturday morning. How you guys all doing? Now you may notice I don't have very many psilocybin mushroom trip reports on my channel. Part of that reason is because the few that I did have were removed back when I did that first purge a couple of years ago. The other reason is I have been on a very long hiatus. The last real intense mushroom trip I had was uh, five years ago. So this video is uh, mainly the story of what it was like to revisit magic mushrooms five years later. Now, I would like to point out that they were completely different, almost indistinguishable from how I remember them. I would also like to point out that yes, of course, I did trip with my hooded trip blanket, which has pockets and they're super soft and you can pick your own up on psychsubstance.shop, link in the comments. I'm sorry I couldn't pass up this opportunity to um, advertise my merch. The only thing we have available right now is this hooded trip blanket. Um, no lie though, these are actually amazing to have a trip in. They're so cozy. Which is crazy, which can imply a few things. It either implies that it was just a one-off bizarre experience, uh, which I think is less likely. More likely it implies that my brain chemistry has changed in the past five years, and if you consider some of my addictive, uh, well, endeavors, then that would very much so make sense. Psychedelics also play on where you are mentally and your emotional intelligence, which for me has all, I believe, upgraded um, for the most part. So that's going to change the experience. And it could also be the strain of mushrooms I consumed, even though I think they were the same ones. I think they were psilocybin B+, and before I had golden teachers, you know, they're both psilocybin cubensis. Uh, however, there is going to be a different ratio of alkaloids from mushroom to mushroom. There's going to be different amounts of, you know, psilocybin, psilocin, biocystin, and now recent studies have suggested that psilocybins have a naturally occurring monoamine oxidase inhibitor within them, making them kind of like an upgrade to ayahuasca, because with ayahuasca you got to consume the DMT with another compound, which is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, but if mushrooms have it all built in, then they really are kind of like the ultimate compound. At least in the realm of psychedelics, uh, there's very few substances that can beat them. You know, in terms of ease of use and how readily available they are, I mean, they grow all over the world. Now, if you guys have been fans of my channel for a while, then you'll know that I've often described psilocybin mushrooms as being more intense than LSD. I compare them to LSD because that is the most common comparison. And for this, I do believe that I was somewhat wrong. I'm not saying that LSD is more intense than psilocybin mushrooms. I'm just saying that I think a lot of the time LSD might be more intense than psilocybin mushrooms. Of course, individual brain chemistry is going to play a role here. However, if you compare my last experience, which was, I don't want to get into specific numbers because this is YouTube, you know, it was a decent amount. It was enough for, um, you know, complete closed eyed, immersive, hallucinatory states and open-eyed visuals. And if I were to compare the experience to what people consider a relative amount of LSD, which again is hard because individual potency of mushrooms varies, but, but regardless, if I were to make that comparison, then LSD often has me feeling much more wonky, much more at least out of control of my thoughts, maybe more in control of my body, but I'm gonna get into this uh, shortly. I was also wrong about the visuals. The visuals were nothing like I remember. In fact, they were heavily reminiscent of DMT. I would stretch it as far as to say they were virtually indistinguishable from DMT with eyes open. Now this is comparing it to maybe like a 10 to 15, yeah, yeah, no, probably about a 15 milligram DMT dose, a dose that's large enough where you could walk around and you're not immobilized and you could check yourself out in the mirror. On DMT, I, I look very symmetrical. Uh, for instance, both sides of my face look like mirror versions, so any little imperfections are just straightened out. And you don't really understand just how well, visually appealing and strange that is until you look at your face in the mirror on DMT or on mushrooms, because I got almost the exact same effect with psilocybin. I basically thought I was looking at my DMT self with some, you know, very slight differences. For instance, DMT is more likely to cause this 
orangey hue to overlap everything. It almost gives things this uh, earthy kind of vibe. And I did get that same earthy vibe from the psilocybin. It was just maybe toned down a little bit. DMT does appear slightly more digitized, if that makes any sense, versus the psilocybin uh, did feel more natural. If I didn't have as much experience uh, with DMT as I do, I could easily mistake them for being indistinguishable. That was really fascinating to me because in the past, I don't recall the visuals being anything alike. So if you look at the psilocybin molecule and the DMT molecule, you can see well, the scratch psilocybin. So your body converts through decarboxylation the psilocybin into psilocin, so that's more, more relative here. So if you look at psilocin and DMT, you can see they look almost exactly the same. Now, a lot of us do know, who have somewhat of a knowledge of chemistry, that even one small change in a molecule can sometimes change it from being safe to consume to dangerous. So you can't really look at this and uh, ascertain too much information of them being, you know, similar experience-wise. I will say that usually molecules that look similar are gonna offer similar type experiences. For instance, you're not gonna have a tryptamine that's going to feel exactly the same way as a benzodiazepine. Different looking molecules, very different experiences. Obviously, this is common, common sense. I feel like I gotta point this out because uh, common sense isn't necessarily the most common thing out there. Anyway, so that all being said, it makes sense to me why it would feel similar or almost exactly the same. Closed-eyed visuals were very similar as well, uh, minus them being as intense. I do feel like if you were to, say, surpass the five gram, then when you're completely immersed in a new world, it's probably gonna be very difficult to tell the difference, especially during the peak, between your mushroom trip and, um, you know, having an average dose of DMT, or maybe even ayahuasca. I mean, saying ayahuasca isn't too much of a stretch because ayahuasca is literally orally active DMT. And if you look at psilocin, it's also orally active DMT, essentially. I mean, psilocin, the chemical name for it, is 4-hydroxy-DMT. So all these compounds are extremely similar. Now, beyond just the visuals, I think I was also wrong about the body feels. I've often described mushrooms as being stoning and feeling like you just, you know, you can relax and lay down. Versus during this experience, again, I don't know if it was a one-off, but I felt very energized. I was pacing around, walking for part of it. In fact, the times when I did want to sit down were really when the nausea got too high, and I have learned what that means. So every time the nausea increased, associated with the visuals also increasing. So during those experiences, I took it as the mushroom overlords giving me a cue that it was time to sit the fuck down, put headphones on, close my eyes, and practice my meditative breathing techniques. Now this worked, oh, fantastic. It was immensely powerful to keep me in a very calm and relaxed state. I could tell when the nausea started to get, you know, kind of overwhelming at points that my anxiety rose with it. And I just remembered like, okay, you know, you're probably getting nauseous and scared because you're trying to control the direction of this experience. Maybe this is the part where you got to let the experience take the lead. So I decided that what I could control was the music I listened to at least. And I have found the most powerful is when you simply decide to stop moving. You just focus on the breath. So you would lay down or sit down and agree to not move. So all of your focus is just on breathing very deep and feeling each breath as it just travels in and out of your airways and then allowing yourself to just get lost in whatever mental space or imagery the mushrooms have chosen to uh, show you. And whenever I would agree to stop moving, uh, which also can translate into agreeing to give up control, because in a very real way you're giving up you know, your ego control of your body and you're allowing the mushroom to take you on a mental journey, whenever I would do that, the experience would quickly flip from being potentially scary. Like, I mean, it never got scary, but it got to the point where it's like, I was facing ego death and I was like, oh boy, this could get bad. You know, give up and just treat it like DMT, essentially. When you smoke DMT, when you can't even move when it gets that intense. So I just treated it the same way. And every single time, within five or 10 minutes, you know, max, I would be calm. And the experience would transition from being riddled with anxiety to pleasurable. It was uh, fascinating, and I mean, it makes perfect sense. This is easier said than done. To put this into practice can be difficult, and the only reason that I believe I was able to do it so efficiently 
is because for well, the past year, I have been practicing daily mindful meditation. Um, often it's just 10 minutes a day, and I usually don't skip days. So I've gotten a lot of practice with this. And when I meditate, I, I focus on not moving. Like, I mean, I try not to even swallow. I try to turn into a statue. And I have found that to be extremely beneficial for both accessing you know meditative states and also as a powerful tool to use during trips to keep you in a calm, relaxed, mindful mode. And I've talked about this before, so I don't want to continue to beat on topics that I've tried to hammer into everyone's heads, but this is one that I wish I knew before I started uh, tripping. I was too arrogant. If I had only known how powerful it was going to be and how it would translate into, you know, powerfully and beneficially affecting my trips, just practicing daily meditation, I would have started doing it ages ago. Um, so I really missed out. I missed the boat on that one. I'm glad that I did catch a late ferry across though, because yeah, it, it is a tool that I would never want to be without. And it's the type of thing that you have to keep doing, just like working out muscles. You have to continue practicing it. If you stop, it is likely that you're going to lose the ability onto the mental headspace. That's a little more difficult to explain, and I don't really want to get into translating the ineffable, um, not in this video at least. I just wanted to give an overview of how I was wrong about psilocybin. And uh, really, I feel like I was wrong about almost every aspect of it. I feel like these compounds can change dramatically from experience to experience because they're working with your neurochemistry at the time. And even day to day, your neurochemistry can change depending on how much sleep you got. Well, and of course, depending on what kind of mood you're in that day. Psychedelics are very difficult compounds even to compare pair. I'm not sure what I have been right about when it comes to psilocybin. I think about the only thing that I have been right about is uh, what it's like to have a psilocybin trip when you're in the wrong headspace, because that makes pretty much any psychedelic scary. <laughs> it does feel good to be able to have these experiences now and uh, to be able to come at them from a more mature, positive, yeah, just mature, grown-up way. Like, it feels, it feels good. It's like um, you fix your life, you know, you start taking care of yourself and the trips follow. Like I now am very aware of what I eat. I exercise almost daily, except for when my old man body decides to get a freaking injury, uh, which really pisses me off. I have almost completely abstained from alcohol use. I, you know, I do slip up here and there with things, but overall I have focused uh, dramatically on improving my, my health, both physically and mentally. And now tripping has completely transitioned from being this very uh, like up and down thing where it's like uh, it's a grab bag. I never used to know what I was going to get versus now I do have some say in the experience because I know how to weather a storm. It, it's great. Um, yeah, good for you, Adam. Good for you. You're doing good. I'm just, yeah, making this video so that you guys can learn from my experiences and uh, potentially learn how to use these compounds as uh, beneficial tools because I definitely do see the healing potential in psilocybin mushrooms, not just uh, as a tool to help you, you know, fix your life and correct bad habits, but also it appears to have some neurogenesis effects where it can uh, help your brain grow new brain cells and heal past trauma and um, the beneficial effects when it is used with the proper intent, well, they are extensive. Of course, proper intent also means using it um, responsibly, so I do want to say that. I'm definitely not an advocate on people tripping irresponsibly, and I'm also not really an advocate of people doing it uh, recreationally. I mean, I'm sure it has its place recreationally, but I find these experiences to be very self-regulating and therapeutic by their nature. I don't think they were designed to be used for a fun time in the same way as people say get drunk or uh, shoot up heroin or smoke meth for a fun time. I, I don't think that is how, I mean, nature intended them to be used if nature is a sentient being and it had any intent at all. I mean, nature did design us kind of for its own enjoyment. So anyway, 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 I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know below if uh, after taking a hiatus of any compound, when, upon revisiting it from a more healthy mind space, if it changed dramatically for you as well for the better, or if maybe it still was negative for you. I'd like to hear your thoughts. A big shout out to everyone supporting us on Patreon. Uh, usually I pop up all your names here. I do apologize that I won't be doing that pop up right now. I gotta go review um, the new names to add and the names to take out. 
and um, right now I'm trying to push this video out quickly and I don't have the time for it because my family's gonna kill me. I apologize for that. If you do support what I'm doing, you can check out our Patreon. I love all you guys. You really are helping keep me afloat on the storm that is YouTube. Um, till next time, take care everybody and I will see you all later. Peace and love. Infinite substances diving deep once again. Uh, now, before we do begin this video, I want to preface it by saying I do not recommend that anybody tries any compound, psychedelic or psychoactive or psychotropic otherwise, without the proper research and care and without tackling it from a responsible and mature standpoint.